This is the NANSIG Neuroanatomy series and today we're going to talk about the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia are a collection of subcortical nucleus found deep in the brain, mostly in the inferior part of the forebrain. They include the caudate nucleus and the putamen, which together make up the striatum, the thalamus, the globus pallidus externa and globus pallidus interna, the subthalamic nucleus, and the substantia nigra, which is further split into the substantia nigra pars compacta and the substantia nigra pars reticularis. The substantia nigra is the only exception in the basal ganglia as it is actually found in the midbrain rather than the forebrain. The basal ganglia is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery, the middle cerebral artery and the posterior cerebral artery. The anterior cerebral artery and anterior choroidal arteries supply the head of the caudate nucleus. The rest of the caudate nucleus, the putamen, the globus pallidus externa and the globus pallidus interna are all supplied by the lenticulostriate arteries, which are branches of the middle cerebral artery. The posterior cerebral artery supplies the th subthalamic nucleus and the substantia nigra. The thalamus gets its blood supply from a variety of arteries, all of which originate at the posterior cerebral artery. These are the posterior communicating arteries, the paramedian thalamic subthalamic arteries, the inferior lateral arteries, and the posterior colloidal arteries. The basal ganglia can be thought of as providing a feedback to the cerebral cortex, modulating and refining cortical activation. The caudate nucleus modulates cognition by projecting to the prefrontal areas and receiving input from the cortical association areas. The striatum receives input from the limbic system and therefore modulates emotion. However, the basal ganglia is most well known for its role in modulating movement and it is this that we shall focus on today. There are two main movement pathways within the basal ganglia. The first we shall look at is the direct pathway which disinhibits movement. Dopamine is synthesized in the substantial nigra pars compacta and travels via dopaminergic neurons to the striatum. Here, the dopamine interacts with D1GS protein coupled receptors. This causes inhibitory gabinergic neurons to fire from the striatum to the globus pallidus internus and the substantia nigra pars reticularis. This inhibitory action on these nucleuses reduces the amount of gabinergic neurons that fire from them to the thalamus. This reduction in the amount of gabinergic neurons firing to the thalamus causes a disinhibition of the thalamus and an increase in the amount of glutinergic neurons which fire towards the frontal cortex. The frontal cortex then fires to the brainstem or the striatum, encouraging movement. The other important pathway for movement within the basal ganglia is the indirect pathway. In the indirect pathway, again, dopamine is synthesized in the substantial nigra pars compacta and travels via dopaminergic neurons to the striatum. However, this time it interacts with D2 GI protein coupled receptors. Dopamine is therefore inhibitory to the indirect pathway. Without this inhibitory input, the striatum would have gabinergic neurons firing to the globus pallidus externus, which would reduce the inhibitory output from this nuclei to the subthalamic nuclei. Therefore, the subthalamic nuclei has an increased glutamatergic effect on the globus pallidus internus and substantia nigra pars reticularis. This increased glutamatergic effect on the globus pallidus internus and substantia nigra pars reticularis causes an increased gabinergic effect from here to the thalamus. This reduced inhibition of the thalamus causes a reduction in the firing of the glutamergic neurons to the frontal cortex. Therefore, overall, this causes a reduction in activity of the frontal cortex
and a reduction in firing to the brainstem and the striatum from the frontal cortex. The direct pathway causes more GABAergic input onto the globus pallidus internus and substantia nigra pars reticularis, which therefore disinhibits the thalamus by reducing the GABAergic output from these nuclei. But the indirect pathway increases this GABAergic output as causes a glutamatergic input to these nucleus. Therefore, the in inhibition that the thalamus sees through the GABAergic input from the globus pallidus internus and substantia nigra pars reticularis is carefully modulated by the direct pathway and the indirect pathway. Here we can see both the indirect and direct pathways. The colour scheme is the same as previously, with red being GABAergic neurons and green being glutaminergic neurons. Here, the indirect pathway is shown by the dashed lines and the direct pathway is shown by the full lines. The pathophysiology of Parkinson's involves the loss of the dopaminergic neurons, which normally fire from the substantia nigra pars compactor to the striatum. This in turn means that there is less GABAergic inhibitory input to the globus pallidus internus and substantia nigra pars reticularis via the direct pathway. It also means that the GABAergic neurons which input to the globus pallidus externus from the striatum are not inhibited, and so there is a lot of inhibitory input into the globus pallidus externus via the indirect pathway. Therefore, the normal balance between excitatory and inhibitory inputs to the global pallidus internus and substantia nigra pars reticularis is out of balance, and the indirect pathway overrides. Therefore, there is a lot of inhibitory output from these nucleus to the thalamus, and movement is inhibited. In Huntington's, dopamine is still synthesized in the substantia nigra pars compactor and interacts with the striatum as normal. However, in Huntington's, instead of a loss of the direct pathway, there is actually a loss of the indirect pathway as the gubernergic neurons that travel from the striatum to the globus pallidus externus are lost. This causes the direct pathway to dominate over the indirect pathway and therefore the thalamus to be completely disinhibited and movement to be encouraged. The most important points to remember about the basal ganglia are that it regulates cognition, emotion and movement. When working properly, the direct and indirect pathways are finely balanced. Disruption of this finely balanced system leads to the severe movement disorders that we've talked about today, Parkinson's and Huntington's. Thanks for listening to the NANSAG basal ganglia anatomy video. There's some resources on the following slide which you may find useful.